Okay, so our alarm is going off, the door gets locked. The next thing we need is our 10-second countdown timer. Now, the way we're going to handle this is going to be kind of similar to how we've been playing sound so far. We're going to use the play announcement sequence object. So let's jump into Kismet real quick. And let me grab a new play announcement. I'm just going to right-click, choose new action, voice announcements, click play announcement. And this first one, I'm going to expand... Take the announcement text and set it to 10. And the object comment also set to 10 as well. Now we need to plug a sound in here. Cool thing is UDK automatically comes with a nice countdown uh, for the end of a match. So come into your content browser, click all assets, and in your search line, type in countdown. And you'll go right to these. And if I just kind of cycle through them all real quick to give you a quick playback. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10. There you go. There's all 10 of them. So if we play back through those backwards, of course, we're going to get a 10 uh, second countdown. But there's a few things we need to keep in mind. One is how we can control how the countdown takes place. It's like, you know, if you ever watched, you know, the first example that comes to mind is a space shuttle launch. They don't necessarily count down in seconds to lift off. And you know, it's kind of a slower countdown. So you could do that as well. It doesn't necessarily have to be one second. And controlling timing here is going to be a critical factor. But first, let's get just a, a very simple countdown in place. So I'm going to open Kismet back up. Let's go into play announcement. Now currently, I believe I still have sound effect 10 selected. So I can go into my announcement sound and just click use sound in content browser. And there it is, plugged right in. Now, I'm going to duplicate this off nine more times to get my remaining sounds. So with this guy selected here in Kismet, we'll hit Control-C, then Control-V. And then I'm just going to hit Control-V for uh, there's nine, then eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Now position all these out like so. And there we go. Now, I need to get them all associated with the proper sound effect and change their comments. Now, the cool thing is, is all of those sound effects are named the same thing with just different numbers at the end. All you have to remember is that it's a two-digit number. So we can take countdown 09 for the next one, but then I'm going to hit the down arrow key and set announcement text and object comment to 9 as well. So if you want, you can cycle through and do these on your own, or if you find yourself wanting to, you know, track forward on the video... I can't say that I would blame you. We'll do 07 and 7 and 7. And then 06 and 6 and 6. Oh five 5 and then 5 and 5. Boring, isn't it? <laughs> oh four. Actually, whoop, I hit the down arrow key. Look what I just did. That's terrible. So I got to grab this guy again. I hit the down arrow key instead of hitting zero, which wiped out my, my input. So we'll set that to four. And then this is four, and this is four as well. So I guess that's a good point that you could watch out. Make sure you don't do the same thing. Three. Two. And finally, one. All right, so we have now set up our countdown. Goes all the way from 10 down to 1. Now, how do we play these back? Well, the immediate answer may be to just plug this guy in here. And we'll certainly get 10, but how do we get the rest? Well, we could wire them in series. We could say, all right, let's do nine, 10 to 9, 9 to 8... 8, 7, and so on. We could just connect all these together. And I missed one. There we go. You can plug from an input back to an output if you like. It doesn't matter. All right. So now let's give this a quick try. So we'll jump in. Now everything's still kind of in fast forward mode. There's no delay on the trigger, so I'm just going to spam through this real fast. We get our little warning. 
five, four, three, two, one. So she's counting down, but the actual visual cue just flew by really, really fast. There was no delay there whatsoever. And then the rate at which she spoke each number was dictated by how long it took her to say that number, which means you don't have a constant countdown. If it's quicker for her to say two than it is to say seven, then the next numbers in sequence are going to come along much more quickly. We need to keep everything nice and regular for a good countdown. So you're probably thinking, well, you know, we used these activate delays earlier. Can't we just right-click on the output of each one of these and set an activate delay of, say, a second? Sure you can. But now let's put yourself in a situation where your level designer comes in and says, hey, that's great, I really like that, but you know, I'm thinking that the delay needs to be a little slower, so can we pull that down to you know, maybe a second and a half? And so you're like, okay, fine. So you go over and you take all your activate delays, you set them to a second and a half, only to find that they come back and say, no, nah, that's too long. Let's try one and a quarter seconds. And so you go change them all again, and you can see where that would waste a lot of time and just be a, a pain to have to go back and edit. What we're going to do instead is make use of a special type of switch called a delayed switch. So let's take just a moment and kill off all these wires just by alt-clicking on each one down the list. We'll even alt-click this wire. I'm going to right-click, come to New Action, down to Switch, and grab a delayed switch. Now what a delayed switch is going to do is it's going to receive a single signal, and then it's just going to cycle down through each thing that's connected to it, one thing at a time, pausing for a set amount of time. So it'll fire off link one, and then the next link, and then the next link, and the next link. Each time it'll wait for a specified delay time. Now if we select it, we've got a few properties we need to keep in mind. The first is the link count, which by default is set to one. We're going to crank this not up to 10, but actually up to 11. 11 is going to be kind of our zero index. So, you know, you count down from 10, you get all the way down to one, and then nothing actually happens at one. It's not like, you know, the, the space shuttle launches at one. It doesn't, it's not like the bomb goes off at one. It all goes off at zero. So you get five, four, three, two, one, and then an explosion. And that's why we're going to set uh, an 11th link here. Also, notice you have a link labeled aborted. For our purposes, just, uh, just pretend in your mind that that's link two. It'll make things a lot easier. Now, let's take our play announcement. We'll plug this to the input of the delayed. And we need to specify what the amount of delay is going to be. Now, there's no property for that. In order to make that happen, we need to right-click on our delay input, create a new float variable, and I'm just going to set that to one second. The cool thing about this is that now our delay time is localized. We don't have to go change it on a whole bunch of different input or activate delays. We can change it in one location, and it'll affect everything. Now we need to get everything connected up. I'm going to hit Control and Alt. I'm going to drag a marquee selection box around all my announcement nodes and slide them over a little bit. And let's just connect and connect and connect. I'd call out what was going where, but it gets kind of confusing because it's link 1 goes to 10, aborted goes to 9, 3 goes to 8, 4 goes to 7, 5 goes to 6. It's just, you can see how they connect. It's pretty linear. And last one. And did I miss somebody? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And we have link 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Oh, you know, I missed link 7. I, it was right there in front of me, and I just didn't see it. You know, I'd be embarrassed if there weren't so many links to stare at. For a second there, for just a second, you actually got to listen to me thinking I was going crazy. So this is what you should have, is a little spare 11th link that's not doing anything. All right, now we need to try this out. So let's close out a Kismet, jump into our level, and once again, we're still in test mode, so I'm just going to zip through our initial stuff. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Two, one. Excellent. So we're getting a nice regular countdown. And if at any point we feel we want to change the playback, we can take that float value, set it up to maybe a second and a half. And let's just try that out again. Ten, 
All right, let's see how she counts this time. Ten, nine, eight, seven. And you can see how that works. So if you want to build up a little more tension and slow down the countdown, you can certainly do that, and it's really easy to do now. So we have our countdown system in place. Everything that needs to happen uh, once the player hits their switch for the final time is technically in order. Now all we need to do is at the end of the countdown, we need to blow up the player. And then as soon as that's done, we're going to switch off our alarm system. So we'll take a look at doing that in the next video. For now, go ahead and save your level and that will wrap everything up here. Thanks.